In the previous several lectures, we discussed what an action potential is and we discussed what a muscle contraction is. So basically we said that an action potential causes a muscle contraction. We also discussed the graph of an action potential that takes place in skeletal muscles and that take place in cardiac muscles. Now, what we're going to emphasize in this lecture is the fact that an action potential is not the same thing as a muscle contraction. So oftentimes, when students are learning about these two concepts, they forget that these two concepts are different, but they are connected. So an action potential is an electrical signal that is usually generated in the nervous system of our body and that electrical signal travels to a particular muscle cell and it causes that particular muscle cell to basically contract. So although these two concepts are related, they are not the same thing. So let's begin by discussing the action potential and the muscle contraction of skeletal muscles and then let's take a look at cardiac muscles. So to contract and or to contract any skeletal muscle, our action potential, our electrical signal must be generated in the central nervous system of our body. So the brain or the spinal cord. And once we generate this action potential, it then travels through the axon of the motor neuron and eventually it ends up on the cell membrane of the skeletal muscle cell. And once it ends up on the cell membrane of that skeletal muscle cell, it generates its own action potential and this action potential inside the cell ultimately leads to a set of processes that cause the contraction of that muscle. So to see what we mean, let's take a look at the following graph. So the y-axis is the membrane voltage. So as we go up, we basically make it more positive. It increases in size. While the x-axis is the time, so as we go along the x-axis, the time increases and this is given in milliseconds. So we have 100 milliseconds, 200 milliseconds, 300 milliseconds, and so forth. So the blue graph is the action potential as it is generated on the membrane of that skeletal muscle cell. And the red graph is the graph that describes our muscle contraction. And notice what we see from this diagram. We see that the muscle contraction takes place after the action potential actually occurred. So Basically, we have the cell membrane of that skeletal muscle. It depolarizes once it receives the signal from the nervous system. And by depolarizing, it basically creates this, uh, uh, this kind of um, peak in our action potential. So it generates this action potential. So we have depolarization, then we have uh, repolarization and we have hyperpolarization and only then does our muscle contraction actually begin to take place. So with respect to our red curve, with respect to the muscle contraction, this section is known as the latent period because this is when our action potential is actually taking place. When the action potential is taking place, that basically leads to the sarcoplasmic return of the skeletal muscle cell to open up, open its calcium channels and release the calcium ions into the cytoplasm of that cell and that takes, uh, that takes time. So as the action potential is taking place during this latent period of the muscle contraction, we basically have the increase in concentration of the calcium inside the cytoplasm and once the concentration increases to a very high value, you, basically when this time elapses, then only then do we have our contraction actually taking place. So in skeletal muscle, the action potential leads to the opening of the calcium channels on the sarcoplasm reticulum. And as the calcium ions begin to flow into our cytoplasm, that increases the concentration. And only when the concentration is high enough, when this time actually passed, does the muscle contraction actually take place because only then do we have enough calcium to actually bind to the actin of our thin 
thin filament and initiate that contraction between the thin filament and the thick filament inside the sarcomere of our muscle cell. So this is our description of the skeletal muscle contraction. So this is known as the latent period. This is when our calcium concentration increases. This is known as the contraction period and this is known as our relaxation period. So now let's move on to our cardiac muscle contraction. So remember the action potential of skeletal muscles looks like this but the action potential for cardiac muscle looks like this because we have this extended period known as our plateau phase. So basically in this case our comparison between the graph for the action potential on the membrane and the muscle contraction looks something like this which is slightly different. We see that the muscle actually begins to contract before our action potential has finished. So basically when we're somewhere in between our plateau phase that's when our muscle contraction basically almost reaches the highest portion. So about when we reach reach this point here does our muscle contraction actually begin to take place and this is important in our uh, heart because the heart must actually create a single forceful and steady muscle contraction so that means we need to have this extended period to actually depolarize the adjacent muscle cells inside our heart. So in cardiac muscle cells, the action potential also causes the release of calcium ions into the cytoplasm of the cardiac myocyte, the cardiac muscle cell, and this ultimately causes the contraction of the sarcomeres and the contraction of the muscle as a whole. Now in both cases, the muscle contraction takes place sometime after the action potential has been initiated, has been generated on the cell membrane. In this case, the muscle contraction takes place after the action potential took place. In this case, we have our action potential generated and then somewhere, uh, somewhere in between, we have the initiation of the muscle contraction. So this is because before the muscle contraction actually takes place, we have to increase the concentration of our calcium ions inside the cytoplasm of that cell. And that means we have to wait a little time period, we have to wait a little for that calcium concentration to actually build up. And what causes that buildup of calcium concentrate of calcium ions is the action potential itself. So the action potential must take place to open up those voltage gated calcium channels so that the calcium can rush into the cytoplasm of the cell. So that's exactly why the muscle contraction takes place after the action potential has been generated.